Okay, so today I'm going to go ahead and show you all something real quick. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go ahead and add a uh, Windows 11 virtual machine to Vert Manager. So the first thing I want to do is open up Vert Manager. As you can see, I already got one here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a force shutdown on it. Um, so what you're going to do here is go new virtual machine. Then go to Windows 11. Then you're going to want to go ahead and take, uh, type in the amount of memory. So uh, depending on the amount of RAM you have, you know, usually anything above 8 gigs I would consider fine. So uh, I'm going to put 1600 and for my CPU cores, I'm going to go ahead and just do 36, just because the scheduler does a pretty good job of balancing them out. Uh, I'm going to go over here and go next. And then go ahead and type in uh, Windows 11, you know, dash 2, because this is the second one. Now, right here where it says uh, uh, virtual network, you're going to see defaults or NAT inactive. You're going to want to go ahead and do a uh, virtual network and NAT. Now, your virtual network, it should have one here by default depending on your distribution. Some distributions do it differently. You might have certain components active or inactive uh, for your uh, libvirt uh, machine. So, if you go right here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then customize configuration before install. So, customize configuration before install. And then uh, I go to Q35. Uh, so this right here is the chipset. So as you see, it says Q35 here. Um, and on firmware, I put UEFI. This is UEFI. Uh, this, the x86-64, that's just, you know, the architecture. The sec boot is for secure boot. Uh, so what you're going to want to go ahead and do is if you're doing a secure boot install and you do have secure boot enabled in your BIOS, you're going to want to make sure you use this one or you're going to have problems booting. Uh, so I guess for me, I actually, I'm going to go ahead and do a BIOS and then this is your display and yes, apply. Now this is your display. All this stuff is usually defaulted correctly. It's all defaulted correctly. So you don't have to worry about it in the USB directories too. So all these options will be pretty much be good to go uh after that you're going to want to go ahead and add your storage so at click add and then uh for me i use zfs so if you want to go ahead and use zfs what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to do dev uh, R, uh z volume for zfs then another forward slash then uh, uh r pool and then the name of your pool so mine will be uh, Windows 11 like that and then disk device and then bus type would be SATA um, so it would be disk device and then SATA yes and then right here uh, what you want to do is click begin installation and if you click it You click it, it will say booting from hard uh, disk. And then obviously it didn't have the correct hard drive boot disk. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a shutdown. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little light bulb. Those are for that. That's for the options. Now, if you click on here, you'll see that's my uh, Z volume. If you do have ZFS, you can create a, uh, like it's a virtual kind of like data. It's a like a virtual drive, which is one of the beautiful things about ZFS. You don't have to make another like data set or another pool or whatever what you can do is you can just do uh, ZFS and then create and then uh, you choose your pool name and then a forward slash and that well actually you would have to do another data set because this would be I guess considered the data set but this is actually a virtual volume so whenever you create this it's essentially a hard drive that's on ZFS um, and it's a 200 gig drive Another thing is too, you can attach thread counts to this. So if you want to go ahead and uh, be able to increase uh, like the performance on your virtual machine, you can assign uh, a specific amount of threads and priorities to it. 
so uh, that would be that uh, dev uh, Z volume R pool like that and then what you're going to do I do is here set your boot now one thing I did forget to show you is I forgot to show you uh, what file to add if you want to boot an ISO so if you want to boot an ISO what you're gonna go ahead and do here is go to uh, add hardware and then uh, you're gonna go ahead and go here uh, CD-ROM device and then manage and then uh, what you do there uh, since we got that uh, um, and then uh, so for me, I would want to choose an ISO file. So I think I got some under home. I do. So I just type in Windows, you know, Windows, you just choose the ISO file and then you make sure it's on the top of your boot order and you post it. And that's pretty much it. That's all you're going to pretty much have to do now. Actually, well, depending on your system, uh, usually the defaults are good. You're going to make sure you have the latest version. Uh, sometimes what will happen is it will not post into the virtual machine the reason why i post in the virtual machine is sometimes the cpu flags aren't passing correctly and it might get hung on one which is unfortunate it sucks but it happens sometimes and what you're going to want to go ahead and do is where it says uh host paths through this is what i would use usually what it does is it's copying the C uh, cpu details and just passing the cpu directly over to the guest from the host now the problem with uh sometimes is sometimes it gets does get a cpu flag with certain models or hardware configurations so that's one thing you might be running into uh, as a problem. So what you're gonna want to do is uh, sudo su and then you're gonna do uh, bursh. And uh, if you do a well bursh, what is it? What uh, bursh Compat compatibilities? Now if you go here, what it's gonna do is show, it's gonna show all the uh, capabilities of your system. So right here is a list of CPU flags, right? So uh, what you can do is you can go ahead and see this one is a, it's a Haswell uh, architecture type with uh, no TSX uh, no TSX enabled and uh, that's the security mitigations for that processor. So uh, knowing that what you're going to do here is you're going to go to host model uh, and uh, where it says host model uh, you're going to go ahead and e you can either add that model and if you want a little more help with that you can go to their uh, official documentation that way you're getting it from the correct and trustworthy source uh you know a lot of times you google this stuff you're going to be getting people's opinions and uh, what things mean so the best way to always get the correct information is to go directly to the source so uh if you type in livebert xml uh and you go here um and uh if you go uh libvert xml right here or let's see you can do host or I type pass through and if you go through here and you just push down for, okay so see we got some right here cpu mode equals host pass through cache mode pass through max physical address mode pass through and uh right here like see cpu host model uh model far back uh, four bid uh and it's and then there's another one right here so you can put the vendor and then you can go ahead and do the model too um where would be the model anyway this is the page right here libvert dot uh, org format domain and you can go here and get the information you're going to go ahead and need to uh you know if you're going to have to mess with your your cpu model settings and stuff like that to get to post anyway uh that's it uh, uh if you like the video like and subscribe send me a donation buy buy me a cup of coffee uh, whatever you like, uh, I appreciate it, uh, humbly. So, uh, anyway, I'm out. Have a good day.